Hi. Let me begin by asking a simple question. If we had to, in, uh, if we had to wish a person on birthday, what is the most common and simple way we say that? We say many, many returns of the day. In a way, it has become a common communication method to say, please have a long life. Have a long life and a healthy life. And there are many pathways for a long life. What are those pathways? One are mostly lifestyle choices you make. The other one is medical interventions. Today, I hope to take you through the exciting things in both of those domains. If I ask you, how long would you want to live? What would be the typical answer? Most people would say, as long as I'm healthy, some people will say, forever. I've seen people who wants to live forever. Those who are a little bit romantic, extra romantic, emotional, they say, a day longer than my spouse. They say that. I heard them telling me that. But there are two central questions. We do not know how long each one of us actually can live and how many healthy years we will have. These are two questions. No one actually has an answer, right? Nobody. If you have an answer, you're going to be really a billionaire now. I can guarantee that. So this movie, which won the Best Actress Award for Julianne Moore, she beautifully acted about Alzheimer's disease sufferer. So that brings home the message that one day these life diseases will catch on with people and requires certain solutions. So she brings that message very strongly. So life with health, long life with health, I consider very special for two reasons. First thing is, when I'm born, I actually did not see my grandparents. Both of them passed away by that time. And then I looked at my family members. The average lifespan is about 35 to 70. So living up to 100 with good health is considered a distinction somewhat special. So with that in mind, I went around asking people who actually been living longer, what is the secret? So secrets of languidity. Martha, who lives in this idyllic, beautiful highlands of Colombia, she has a grandmother, grandmother there, who is 85 plus, according to her, family and friends, the emotional support you receive, positive sum of emotions, like the friends you have, and a strong desire to live, and live in peace and tranquility. More importantly, she said one more thing, don't count the age, just live. And then I, I was not satisfied, I said I must discover more. So. Then I went to my friend Chema. He lives in Spain. He has a person who is 93 plus years old. He said, good food, fresh air, clean water. That would do. If you're still more keen for longevity, he said, watch the bullfights. The reason he said that is basically the gentleman who is 93, you have to do things that excites you. And each person has their own excitement. There are different type of things. People get excited. I don't need to list them, but you do what excites you. That also brings a positive 
higher lifespan. So then I went to China. So I asked a wise man in China. He said, control the expectations. Eliminate negative feelings. And feel anger. It's very interesting. When I actually talk to some of these elderly people, they look at me and they say, when I ask them, how old are you? The straight answer, without even thinking, without blinking an eye, they say, I'm younger than you. They say that to me. So then I reflected on it. It is clear. They strongly believe that actually they feel very younger at heart. So feeling anger at heart is also seems to be one of the secret sauce for longevity. I went to India. Uh, he's the man with 108 years old. He's still alive. He's almost hitting 110. And I approached him. I come to Indian philosophy. 120 years is about full life. And what he said is, work is worship. Eat less. And meditation. So that's what he's been doing for so many years. And uh, clearly you could see he's 108 years old. Very sharp. And to give you an evidence, I just met him a few weeks ago. Then, of course, I came back to Singapore after searching everywhere. I met this gentleman. He's a Scottish gentleman who lives in Singapore. He's an eye specialist, age 93, still working at Singapore Eye Research Institute. And he said, well, it's a good genes. Do everything you like, but in moderation. And he also said, be active mentally and physically. At the end of it, he whispered in my ears, he said, don't see the doctor. <laughs> so what he actually meant is, don't see the doctor unnecessarily. Right? So from there, if I put it in a reasonable, simplified way, quality with age, it declines after the middle age. And what options do we have in terms of the medical interventions? You have basically medicines, you have medical devices, you have organ transplantation, you have this new thing called regenerative medicine. I will take you through that one. So just as men, we discover, just as women, we discover men also has a menopause, but we call it monopause, <laughs> right? And it's a billion dollar industry now. There are medicines available to treat monopause. And then you got 1.5 million medical devices to choose from. Just like iPhones you choose, you can choose medical devices too. 1.5 million medical devices. These are approved medical devices. But the point is, all these medical devices only work for X number of years. There is still a challenge. Then you have something called organ transplantation. That means someone kind to you donates their kidney or liver, who needs, and then both will have a better life eventually. Organ transplantation. So if you Think of it, it's not been there for a long time. Organ transplantation is only there from 1954. It's about 60 years. First human organ transplant was kidney. Then afterwards, liver, heart, even heart can be replaced. Now, there's a gentleman in uh, Italy. He claims he can replace your head. So you can choose which body you like or which head you like. That's a head transplantation, and he claims in the next two years or so, he would want to do that. So, well, I wish good luck. But the fundamental issue here is a shortage of organs, donor organs. That's an issue. So that leads us to the next possibility, which is coming up, what we call regeneration. Right? Regeneration is the holy grail of the medicine. So if you know, if you have a a larger wound, it does not heal by itself. But if you have a minor wound, it heals by itself. So that healing process is regeneration. But when it is a large wound, it is difficult to regenerate. 
And the same issue, when we get old, somehow we lose the ability to regenerate. But if, if you look at salamanders, they retain their regenerative ability quite late into the advanced age. If you see it's severe, it's one of the arms, it actually can grow again. Won't you like to have that possibility? Suddenly your eyesight goes away, you can regenerate and create your own new eyes. That would be fantastic. So that's the whole idea of this new uh, regenerative medicine that's coming up. So how do we go about? There are three important elements. One is cells, other one is regenerative biomaterials, the other one is uh, conditions. So we provide the right environment for the cells to behave in a particular way so that regeneration of the tissues and organs takes place. Now, how do we do that? You bring all these three things together and you have a regeneration. So what you see here, let me ask you, anybody did not try candy, cotton candy? I'm sure most of you tasted cotton candy. And you see the girl really liking the cotton candy. So we do two things here in a regenerative medicine. We follow the techniques similar to cotton candy. We make materials as such that the cells in the human body like them. So I produce uh, biomaterials similar to cotton candy, but they have a special features that they're liked by the cells, so eventually they regenerate. So to give you some idea, we want to take the most toughest organ in the human body for regeneration. So two organs in a human body are most difficult to regenerate. One is the brain, the other one is heart. You know, heart is very difficult to convince, you know that. At the same time, heart also very difficult to regenerate. You can hear cancer in many parts of the human body. You will never hear, or very rarely, you hear about cancer in the heart. Heart cancer, you don't hear about it. The reason is, heart do not regenerate easily. So it is most difficult organ to regenerate. So how do we do that? So here is the porcine, a model, on which this particular cotton candy type of regenerative biomaterial that has been placed, and then we regenerate the heart. And this is the improvement, the way the regenerated heart comes back. So if you want to see this one, you see that beating cardiomyocyte. So when you do the regeneration, that particular part of the heart comes back alive. Right? So the most difficult thing to do, but that has been demonstrated in the uh, model. Here is an example of growing brain. It's a human mini brain grown in the laboratories. So in the future, you need a brain augmentation, or uh, increase your brain capacity, you know what to do. <laughs> so several parts of the human body are now being regrown. Some are already in the clinical practice. So in certain hospitals, you actually can go for uh, regenerative medicine as an option. Not every organ, but some organs it is possible now. So in summary, the secrets for long life are two aspects. One is the lifestyle choices that primarily means what your body is familiar with in terms of the food habits, spiritual, mental, as well as culture and a lifestyle, what your body is most used to and comfortable with. And you reduce the amount of damage you cause to your, yourself over the time. You limit the damage. So this is what you do in terms of lifestyle. When it comes to medical interventions, you have medicines, medical devices, you have organ transplantation, and you have regenerative medicine. So these are the pathways for a long life. But I want to show you there is some more to it in terms of long life. What's that gentleman doing? 
he is resting he is sleeping very nicely sleep is essential for regeneration of the brain and recuperation of the body so i want you to sleep after the ted lecture not during the ted lecture <laughs> so be happy sleep well each day is a bonus and my previous speaker said that is a myth the apple <laughs> falling on the newton's head <laughs> well i take i believe that <laughs> but i wish you all a long and a healthy life thank you